Greetings, fellow musicologists. Wow, 50 years of an album that has aged really well. I am talking about Master of Reality by Black Sabbath. It's their third studio album and it was released 50 years ago. Can you believe that? Exactly on July 21st, um, 1971. It is regarded by some critics as the foundation of doom metal. Stoner rock, sludge metal. Funny that at the time it was not well received by critics. However, the album is considered now one of the greatest heavy metal albums of all time. It was certified double platinum after having sold over um, 2 million copies. Wow, that's a lot. Master of Reality was recorded uh, at Island Studios in London. It took them about two months to record it. Um, it's amazing how many albums back then, you know, the bands could put out. And it's just like amazing. One album per year. It was produced by Roger Bain. And he was at the helm for both Black Sabbath, the self-eponymous, and Paranoid. And this was his last collaboration with Black Sabbath. They downtuned both the guitar and the bass. They went one and a half steps lower than the E standard tuning. So the goal was to reduce string tension because it was really painful for Tony Iommi to play. You know, he had a factory accident um, and the tips of two of his fingers were just severed. So the down tuning was responsible for that doomy, that very low um, bass of doom, the heavy guitars. And um, another interesting fact is that by down tuning, Ozzy had to sing higher. So that made things harder when Ozzy had to sing live. In the 2013 biography of the band, which is called Symptom of the Universe, the author, Mick Wall, he writes that Sabbath took a plunge into the greater darkness, leaving their sound as dry as old bones dug up from some desert burial plot. The finished music's brutish force would so alarm the critics and they would punish Sabbath for being blatantly thuggish, purposefully mindless, creepy, and obnoxious. They did hit a nerve with their groundbreaking and creative approach to have your music. In the early 90s, bands like Smashing Pumpkins, Soundgarden, Nirvana, they all went after that sound, that doomy sound. Everything started with Master of Reality. Ozzy Osbourne, for example, I think he said that he can't remember much of the sessions, you know, of uh, Master of Reality. He just remembers that Tony downtuned the guitar. Geezer had to downtune it too. Geezer wrote uh, the first song, Sweet Leaf. Ozzy remembers Children of the Grave. Obviously, he, he thinks it's one of the most kick-ass songs of all time in terms of like the Black Sabbath catalog. And um, really great song that they recorded. And in, in 1971, for sure, you could picture that it was a super heavy tune with the you know, dun, 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 absolutely amazing. I covered the song, both bass and vocals. Please click here to check it out. So elaborating on the album now, you know, exploring further avenues, new sounds. Tony tried some classical themes, geezer double tracks. Bill, the drummer, tried bigger bass drums, different toms, overdubs. So they were really getting more comfortable with the recording process. They were much more experimental. The first song is called Sweet Leaf. It's got a really interesting riff and the story is also interesting because, you know, Tony and Geezer, they were just thinking, okay, what are we gonna talk about? Um, and uh, Geezer writes the lyrics and Geezer said, I do remember writing Sweet Leaf in the studio. I just come back from Dublin and in Ireland they had these cigarettes, you know, it's called Sweet Afton and 
you can only get them in Ireland. He took this cigarette packet, and as he opened it, he saw it's the sweetest leaf. Uh, the sweetest leaf that gives you the taste. And he's like, oh, sweet leaf. <laughs> and then, you know, the album starts with Ozzy coughing, and they have like a loop, looped up version of his cough. So the main riff comes, you know, bum, bum, bum. If we analyze the second tune, it's called After Forever. Geezer Butler, he had a Catholic upbringing, and he wrote the song, the lyrics for After Forever, and it focuses a lot on, you know, Christianity and Christian themes. At the time, obviously, people were more conservative. Everyone suspected that they were Satanists, you know. They had that really dark sound, dark image, and the lyrics. So they ended up releasing After Forever as the single for Master of Reality. And every time I listen to that tune, I remember the riff for Paperback Rider by the Beatles, you know. The Paperback Rider. Dun, 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 dun with the bass boom 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 listen to the first 30 seconds of after forever and uh try to sing paperback rider on top of it you will know what i'm talking about the third song is called embryo which is an introduction to children of the grave and it all makes sense since we were embryonic cells um living embryonic cells not dead ones like sepultura uh, just, just kidding. Lyrically, the song has anti-war themes. It's similar to War Pigs, the opening track on Paranoid. It's like you need to change the direction that you're going towards, you know, violence, war, uh, countries, the clash, the youth has to think about the future, has to do something. It, if not, they're just going to go to war and they might not come back. After Children of the Grave, one of the strongest tracks on the album, we have Orchid. It's, uh, it's about one minute and a half and it's, um, it's got acoustic guitar melodies, really nice. It reminds me of the Beatles, really neat. And all of a sudden, uh, after that minute and a half, we get into Lord of This World which has a very Jack Bruce type of riff, you know, it reminds me of Cream, but it's slower, it's more distorted, and it's down tuned, so it's much heavier. And it helped Sabbath with, you know, the metal directions. Um, actually, in my opinion, they took it to perfection, you know, Master of Reality, it's a mixture of those really religious lyrics, you know, psychological analysis of the mind, and, and this song, is all about that you know overall the behavior of human beings it talks about capital sins death selling your soul um, to the lord of this world to this world of perdition and then things get really calm with solitude it's a different tune it reminds me of the beatles but with a more celtic or folk vibe maybe some sort of like jethro tall maybe the lyrics reminds me of Ulysses and Calypso, you know, like the ancient Greek myth um, of Ulysses being stranded on the island of Ogygia for many, many years and nothing can please me, only thoughts of you. This is Calypso writing to Ulysses, you know, um, Ulysses who just left when I begged you to stay. Um, well, he stayed for many years but he was crying and despondent and he missed his wife Penelope so much and Athena intervened she talked to Zeus Zeus uh, talked to Hermes and then Hermes asked Calypso to set Ulysses free the lyrics of solitude I've not stopped crying since you went away the world is a lonely place you're on your own so for me it's always about this longing this beautiful story of Calypso and Ulysses on the island of Ogygia. But I digress. So now we reach the final part of the album. We look at the last song. It's called Into the Void. It's the last one on the album, but the riff for Into the Void is just absolutely brilliant. This riff is so good 
but so good that it is one of James Hetfield's favorite Black Sabbath riffs. When I listen to it, I can totally picture James um, playing it, you know, with Dell picking. And Eddie Van Halen has also stated that it is one of his favorite riffs. So you can be sure that this stuff is really good. The influence of Tony's style and this, his composition, his riff making is just, the influence is humongous, it's mind blowing. So you can think of so many bands that were highly influenced by Black Sabbath and this classic riff making sound. Um, bands like Trouble, uh, Candle Mass. In the 90s you have Soundgarden, um, then later on you have Mastodon, and you have the new wave of traditional heavy metal with Beastmaker, uh, a project by Trevor Church. You should definitely check it out. You know, he's got that stuff to a T. And if you want to explore more of this um, doom metal universe, you got hundreds of possibilities, you know. Playlists on Spotify and uh, YouTube. Um, but that's the beauty of this album. That's the beauty of Master of Reality. You know, 50 years ago, a bunch of dudes from Birmingham, England, they have changed the musical landscape of heavy music forever. So we can only thank them. We can only say happy 50th anniversary to the true Masters of Reality. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't. And um, there's much more coming. Uh, song analysis, album reviews, bass covers, um, the sky's the limit. Music is what music does. See you in the next video. Till then, play sharp and listen to as much music as you can.